Hi there everyone and welcome back to Advanced Higher Biology. Uh, today we are back on Unit 1, uh, Key Area 2, Proteins, and Sub Key Area 2B, which is the synthesis and transport of proteins. As the name suggests, this sub key area is going to be all about protein synthesis, so how we make proteins, and how those proteins are then transported around the cell and where they are transported to. So let's make a little start. So one thing you might remember that we touched on in Unit 2 of Higher Biology is the idea of there being internal membranes within a eukaryotic cell. And the idea of having more membranes within a cell is that it increases the total area of membrane inside it. The idea being that if you only had the plasma membrane around the outside of a cell, there's not enough space there, there's not enough uh, volume of membranes for metabolic activities or for enough metabolic activities to take place. So as I said, those eukaryotes, if you only had the one cell membrane, you'd have a very, very small surface area to volume ratio. But having more intracellular membranes is going to give you more area to carry out all the vital functions that you require. So going back to the cell itself, going back to National 5, you should be able to go and draw and label all the parts of an animal cell. We're going to go into more detail in advanced cell biology. So what I have here is in the sort of pinky orange, you have the parts of the cell that you should already know. You should be able to identify them, label them, and also tell me what those parts are responsible for. So your simple parts such as the nucleus, cell membrane, vacuole, mitochondria, ribosome, and then your cytoplasm. What I have in blue, though, is the new parts that we're going to be talking about as well. Um, so you may have seen these on images before and thought, well, you don't need to know them just now. Uh, but we're going to go through these parts here and what they do. And it's important that you know their function because we're going to be going back and forth between these different areas throughout the rest of this sub-key area. So to start off with, you may have noticed uh, there's two with a similar name here. Both are called endoplasmic reticulum, and we abbreviate that to ER. Now, there's two forms of them that we'll speak about in a minute, but you can see there's a network of membrane tubules that go on from the nuclear membrane. So in this image here, we have a nuclear membrane that contains the nucleus in the middle, and then right attached to it, this part that's flowing outside it is the entire endoplasmic reticulum. Now, we'll go back into more detail about that later, but for now, moving on to the next organelle, we've got the Golgi apparatus. So Golgi or Golgi, you might hear both, it doesn't really matter. The Golgi apparatus itself is just a series of flattened discs. And what's going to happen is proteins that are being made are going to be packaged and processed within this Golgi apparatus. They're going to move between these discs and then they're going to be released to other areas. Uh, next we have lysosomes. So lysosomes are membrane-bound organelles and they have a bunch of hydrolases. So hydrolases are enzymes that are going to digest proteins, lipids, nucleic acids and carbohydrates and we'll talk about them more later on but they are found within the cell. Uh, we'll also mention vesicles quite a lot as well and these are quite simple. They are just uh, little transport molecules and they're going to bud off from various uh, organelles and transport materials to different parts of the cell. Uh, we're going to be going into a bit more detail about membrane structure in the next couple of key areas, but to start off with, you hopefully remember that the cell membrane or the plasma membrane is made up of lipids and proteins, uh, especially if you remember the phospholipids within the membrane structure. Now, these lipids and proteins are made within the ER or the endoplasmic reticulum, and as I said, there are two parts, two different types of the endoplasmic reticulum. So we have the rough endoplasmic reticulum, the RER, and the rough endoplasmic reticulum has got these dots over the surface that you'll see in a minute. And those dots are ribosomes and they're on that cytosolic face. So if they've got rough kind of bumps on them, they contain ribosomes. Hopefully you remember ribosomes, the cytoprotein synthesis. So these ones are going to produce the proteins. Whereas the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the SER, they do not have ribosomes. So they are smooth, they are not bumpy because they have no ribosomes, but that also means they are not making any proteins. So that's where those lipids are going to be made. And in this image here, just so you can see what I'm talking about, you have on the left the rough endoplasmic reticulum, where these little ribosomes are the bumps on them, making it rough. And then on the right, we have the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the SER, that lacks those ribosomes. Now, as I said, those lipids are going to be made in the SER, whereas proteins are going to be made in the RER. 
Um, but we're going to be kind of going through a few processes here. So lipids are first of all made or synthesized in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, and then they are inserted into the membrane. Now, in terms of proteins, we're going to go through a couple of different points here. Now, first of all, the synthesis of all proteins begins in cytosolic ribosomes. Now, the cytosol is the liquid component of the cytoplasm. So when we talk about cytosolic ribosomes, these are ribosomes that are free within the cytoplasm. They are not attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. So they're not that rough ER. Now, the synthesis of cytosolic proteins is completed in those cytosolic ribosomes. And any of those proteins are going to remain then in that cytosol, which, like I said, just that liquid part of the cytoplasm. However, there's also going to be a different form coming up. But cytosolic proteins are made in cytosolic ribosomes and stay in the cytosol. Now, what happens here is transmembrane proteins that we will talk about more in other cell area as well, they carry a signal sequence. And that signal sequence is going to halt translation, if you remember, when those proteins are being synthesized at the ribosome. If the signal sequence halts translation, that then directs the ribosome, which is making that protein, to go across and dock with the endoplasmic reticulum to form the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So going back to what we said before, you have the all proteins are being made in the cytosolic ribosomes, but if you have the signal sequence halting translation, that ribosome is then going to move across and dock or bind with that endoplasmic reticulum to make it now an RER or a rough endoplasmic reticulum. Just an extra bit of detail for you as well, that signal sequence itself is just a short stretch of amino acids at the end of polypeptide. And when that halts translation directs the ribosome, it's also going to determine the eventual location of the protein within the cell itself. So once the protein has been made, what's going to happen to it and where is it going to go? Now, after that docking has taken place, so the ribosome is now at the endoplasmic reticulum, then translation will continue and the protein itself is going to be inserted into the membrane, just like we talked about the lipids being made in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And then once the proteins are within the endoplasmic reticulum, then they're going to be transported across to the Golgi apparatus. And like we said, this is where these vesicles are going to become handy. So they're going to transport the proteins and they're going to bud off or just be released from the endoplasmic reticulum and they're going to fuse at the Golgi apparatus. And just remember, they are transported by these vesicles. What happens within the Golgi apparatus itself is, like we said, it's a series of just flattened discs within the Golgi apparatus. Molecules are going to basically move from each disc, so they're going to bud off from one disc, and a vesicle is going to transport them across to the next one, and they flow through that Golgi apparatus. There's also a part that's going on during this process where enzymes within the Golgi apparatus are going to be catalyzing the addition of various sugars, in a bunch of steps in a metabolic pathway to form carbohydrates. And we're going to be using those carbohydrates in a moment. So at this stage, the protein has been moving through the Golgi apparatus um, and it's been moving from stack to stack. What's going to happen here is that there's going to be post-translational modification. Now that sounds really complicated and very fancy, but all it really is, is the protein has been translated. So this is after translation, and you're going to go and modify this. So you're going to change that protein and changing its structure, changing its function potentially. Uh, there's a couple of forms of these. The one we're going to focus on right now is the addition of carbohydrates. That's quite a major modification to a protein if you go and add some carbohydrates onto it. But that is one example of post-translational modification that you need to know. Okay, and that's gonna be taking place in the Golgi apparatus. We'll come back to this later on as there is a second form as well. Now, once we get to that point, so the protein has now moved through the various discs of the Golgi apparatus, there's been post-translational modification going on, these vesicles, once again, are going to transport those proteins. So, those proteins are now going to leave the Golgi apparatus, and they're going to head across to either the plasma membrane, they might go to some lysosomes as well. Now, uh, when we're talking about these vesicles moving throughout the cell, Obviously, in the animations, you're just seeing them floating across. One thing that you do need to be aware of is these vesicles move across something that we call microtubules. They're almost like strings that go across and they form a network throughout the entire cell. So uh, this example of, um, of microscope work that you see below here is showing up the fluorescence of microtubules. 
the sort of ready orangey part in the middle is a nucleus and you can see this like cobweb of microtubules that are going all the way through that cell. Each of those green microtubules in this case is going to be uh, used by a vesicle where they're going to essentially crawl along that microtubule to go from one area to another within the cell. Um, I don't have an animation for this on here, but if you go and look at a video of how this works, it's actually really cool. It's like they're walking across and transporting whatever they have within the vesicle uh, from one area of the cell to another. So make sure you go and have a look at those, and you also do need to be aware that microtubules are what's going to be used by the vesicles to, uh, to move molecules from one area to another. Now the final part we're going to look at here is called the secretory pathway as well, and this is where we're making secreted proteins. Now, two examples you should know for this are peptide hormones and digestive enzymes. So they are both forms of secreted hormones, uh, proteins, apologies. Now, they are going to be translated in ribosomes that are on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And again, go back to this image here, we have our RER. So they're going to uh, synthesize these secreted proteins and then afterwards are going to enter the lumen. Now, after this, we're going to go through the same form of pathway we've seen before. The proteins are going to go to the Golgi apparatus and then they're going to be packaged, this time with special secretory vesicles. So these secretory vesicles are going to do the same process as before. They're going to transport these proteins and, for example, they will go across to the plasma membrane. What will happen here? is the vesicle will go and take the protein to the plasma membrane, where it is then going to go and fuse with the plasma membrane, and then that's going to release the protein out of the cell. So remember, this is all going and taking place inside the cell, and if it's a secretory protein, then this protein is being taken from the Golgi apparatus to the plasma membrane, they're going to fuse with the plasma membrane, and then the protein is going to be released out of the cell. And then the final part we're really looking at here is another form of that post-translational modification that we talked about. Now, in this case, many secreted proteins are translated and synthesized in an inactive form. And in order for them to become active, they need to go through a process of post-translational modification. In this case, one called proteolytic cleavage. Now, ideally, essentially, sorry, the idea of cleavage is really just cutting off an area, removing a point of that inactive protein to make it an active form of the protein. So quite simply in the diagram below you can see there's an enzyme here because um, a big example of what we use in the secretory pathway is digestive enzymes. So if you have this digestive enzyme that has been synthesized, that's inactive, you go through the post-translational modification process of proteolytic cleavage in order to make it active and it now works. And that is all for that sub-key area. So just make sure you go through those. You're looking at these new areas of the cell that we have introduced, what the function of those structures of the cell actually are, and how these proteins move throughout the cell as well. And once you do that, we'll then move on to the next key area, C, which is where we look at protein structure. And we go into a bit more detail about what's going to happen. Um, thanks so much for everyone who's been watching these. I do apologize. It's been quite slow at bringing these out. There's a lot of videos that are half finished that will hopefully come out very soon. So thank you very much for all your, uh, your messages. I really do appreciate them. And hopefully I'll see you very, very soon for part C. Bye for now.